We're recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanuk, the editor of Recording Magazine, and today we're taking a look at the world's first microphone voiced in the court of public opinion, the $199 Aston Element. Aston are a British microphone company whose mics are known for innovative new features, which include dent-resistant spring grills found on the Origin and Spirit, a built-in laser sight on the Starlight, and the multi-voiced, preamp-equipped, active, dynamic stealth microphone. The element takes this a step further as Aston arguably has developed the first new capsule-slash-diaphragm design in over 80 years. The Aston story begins with the Aston 33, a panel of 600-plus engineers who have blind auditioned and taste-tested every Aston microphone to date during its development process. With the element, Aston expanded that circle to include you, the public. Through multiple rounds of blind listening tests, over 4,000 people weighed in with feedback on multiple element release candidates alongside mics from other big-name classic companies. Once everyone zeroed in on their favorite, and more importantly, when the best-voiced Aston variant came out on top of the competition, the element was born. Aston is being pretty secretive about its new capsule technology, which they call Ridian. I can tell you that it's a phantom-powered, active, moving-coil diaphragm that's 1.5 inches in diameter, which is pretty sizable for a moving-coil design. The Ridian diaphragm is ultra-thin and very sensitive, offering a super-fast transient response and a sensitivity similar to a condenser mic, the punch and rejection of a dynamic mic, and it also has a natural, even sound similar to a ribbon design. I would love to show it to you, but it's protected behind a large, unique, perforated, metal disc-style grille and sealed in an oval-style body that fits together as front and back halves rather than as a capsule placed on top of a circular body. This design is not just for looks. The sculpted and tapered contours around the capsule and grill perform a similar function as a waveguide on a monitor speaker, lessening stray reflections and resonance. When the mic is receiving phantom power, the Aston logo glows purple. The element fits into a proprietary shock mount that's ultra thin and strong and clicks firmly into two tabs on the mic. The mic also comes with a large metal pop filter that magnetically attaches to the front of the mic and was reported to be the first of its kind. The only thing that I did notice is that if the mic gets shaken or bumped, the shock mount can rattle the pop screen for a few seconds. We review the Aston Element in the February 2021 issue of Recording Magazine. And I say we because as a people's mic, we put the Element into the hands of three different reviewers. I put it to use here in my studio, Moss Garden Music. Reviewer and professional drummer David Blasco threw it up on his drum kit in his Nashville-based studio. And associate editor Alex Hawley tried it out both at Coop Studios in Boulder, Colorado, as well as his home studio. I'm David Blasco. I'm a drummer producer here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, when I got the Aston Element, uh, right away I wanted to try it as a close mic on the drums. So I set up my Gretsch Brooklyn kit as a three piece, just kick drum, snare drum, and floor tom with two cymbals, my 17 inch K custom hybrid hi-hats and my 22 inch K Constantinople medium ride, both just darker cymbals. Right away, I realized that there was a lot more high end and low end than you would find on maybe a traditional dynamic mic that you might mic up a kit with and not as much rejection at all. Way more sensitive than a uh, dynamic mic, which, uh, for me, I probably wouldn't grab for this for a close mic. Um, just picked up a lot of the kit as a whole, and I imagine miking an entire drum kit with it, you would get a lot of bleed of just everything in every channel. Uh, so then I decided to just capture the kit as a whole. I tried three different positions. First one was sort of in front of the drum kit, about chest level, about three feet in front of the kick drum, angled down towards the snare drum. Secondly, I tried just a traditional mono overhead position, about forehead level, 
centered right over the snare drum, give or take. Lastly, I tried a crotch mic, as they say, which is just about three inches above the kick drum on the rim closest to me, pointed directly at me. The element is a bit of an enigma to me for recording drums, for what I'm usually used to uh, here in my home studio. Um, I really liked the low end. It had a very prominent proximity effect that you can really use to your benefit for accentuating that low end from the toms and the kick drum. However, the high end to me was somehow dark, yet also trashy, which usually trashiness in a mic is a sound I associate with one being harsh, but the element was not harsh. It was somehow simultaneously dark and a little bit just prominent in those trashy high mid frequencies. Um, and it was just it was just very interesting to me. It it definitely sounds as unique as it looks, and I'm sure that given enough time with it, with drums in particular, I could find some really interesting uses for it as room mics, overheads, etc. I wasn't sure what to expect from Aston Element, and unfortunately I had to send it back to Paul so he could continue making this video, so I'm not currently reading into one. But overall, I felt that the Aston Element lived somewhere uniquely in between a dynamic and condenser microphone, has enough sparkle in the top end to capture vocals and acoustic guitars, but it still maintains some of that mid-range punch that we expect from dynamics. On acoustic guitar, I thought it sounded best slightly further away than where I usually place the mic, which is interesting, I think that's due to its wider cardioid polarity. The response is clear and natural. Again, it has a hint of that dynamic mid-range flavor paired with an open top end. The low mid-range is full, perhaps slightly less muddy than other dynamics, but it has a nice warm weight to it. Element's low noise floor makes it a great voiceover candidate as well, especially for podcasting applications. However, a really tight sound with a dead room is hugely important for that type of work, and its wider polarity may create a few challenges if you're working in an untreated space. It sounds great in treated VO booths for that type of application, but if you plan to use it for podcasting or vocals in an untreated room, just be aware that its wider polarity may pick up some unwanted reflections in the room. The Element has a bold proximity effect, a rich mid-range presence, and a nice clarity on speech, which hopefully you can hear. The Element has a very wide pickup pattern, and for a cardioid mic, the Element has a very generous sweet spot, making it an excellent choice for vocalists and instrumentalists who like to move and sway while they're tracking. You can get right up on it for a bit of instant radio voice, and then the, as you move away from the mic, the proximity effect chills out, but it never becomes thin or anemic. Let's listen to the Element in action. We took David's front of kit drum take, we added in Alex's acoustic guitar and a lead electric guitar solo. From there, I added some Fender Rhodes piano through a Fender Princeton amp and a real tape delay. I played some Remo Tubanos and a shaker. Then I had some friends stop by. Jerry Bacash added some bass and Matthew Lautz was kind enough to come up with some lyrics and do some singing for us. In this example, this is the sound of the Aston Element wide open. There's no EQ. No compression, no limiting, no added effects of any kind. Shadows fall and the light cuts through it all And you know it's gonna be a while before we see it all again When it takes so much and there's not enough And you think that there might be a chance to make it all right again I know the reason for 
why we keep on facing the seasons It's the limits of what's possible So just enjoy the improbable Shadows fall when the light cuts through it all And you know it's gonna be a while before we see it all again I hope you enjoyed our three views of the new Aston Element and hearing it in action. As mentioned, the Element comes in at 199 street price, and all three of us agree that's pretty impressive. If you'd like to dig deeper, check out our review in the February 2021 issue of Recording Magazine. Also, check out AstonMikes.com for further details. You can also check out my podcast interview with James Young of Aston, and I will put the link down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like button and better yet, subscribe to our YouTube page for more video reviews, online gear comparisons, how-to videos, and more. Stop by our website, recordingmag.com, for the best in all things recording, where you can also subscribe to our print publication, now in its 34th year. I'll see you soon.